Welcome to Webidoo. In this short tutorial, we'll learn how to add forms to our website. Let's start by inserting a form into our canvas. Click on the form icon or just drag and drop the icon onto the canvas like that. The default starting point is always a white background and a send button only. To this basic form, we can now add elements such as text input fields, drop down menus, checkboxes, radio buttons, and basic design elements such as shapes, images, and texts. We can easily adjust the fill, stroke, and shadow of each element in our form using the Properties panel on the right side of the canvas. In the Form tab on the right side menu panel, you can set your form's desirable settings. You can add the email address to which you would like to target sent messages using this form. In addition, you will receive these messages directly to your inbox, located in your WebEDU's dashboard. In the confirmation options, you can define where the confirmation message will show up after the user completes the form. You can choose message on page, which means that the confirmation message will show up on the same page and at the same position of the original box of your form. Then you can click on the edit message on page button in order to design the confirmation message. You can adjust the existing elements or insert new elements using the upper menu, such as shapes, images, and texts. As always, you can set the fill, stroke, and shadow of each of these elements using the Properties panel on your right. Another option you can choose from the Confirmation options is Redirect to Link. Use this option in order to redirect the user to a specific confirmation page on your website or to an external URL address. In order to add fields to your form, choose the form and then click on your desired field icon or just drag and drop the icon into your form box. Let's start with the text input. Each form element is composed of three sections, the label text, the field, and the error message. You can change the position of each section manually. Just drag the section into its new desired position, like that. To change the size of the sections manually, just use the bounding box anchor points to resize the box. Remember that when you're manipulating the size and position of each of the three sections of the element, all three remain in one group container. In order to design the label text section, click on it and use the Properties panel on your right to adjust the fill, stroke, or shadow of the section. In order to design the text of the section, double-click on the text and use the text editor on your upper menu to set your desired parameters of size, color, etc. When you double-click on the Field section, the Field tab opens up on the Properties panel on your right side menu. Here you can determine the type of field your user will fill out, single line, multi-line or password. Single line will limit the user's reply to one line only. Multi-line is best when you want to allow the typing of long messages. You can define the kind of validation you want for your field, whether the user reply should be an email, phone number date, or phone. For example, using the number validation will allow a reply composed of numbers only, and an error message will appear if the user types in letters instead. You can define the design of the text that the site user will type in, setting the font, size, and color. Passwords that the user will type in will show up as asterisk signs in order to protect the privacy of your users. The field space function defines the amount of pixels you want between the edge of the field and the inner type text. You can easily modify the default text of your field like that. To make sure the user fills out a particular field, use the required field option. If the field will be empty before submitting the entry, an error message will appear. Use the eye icon to show or hide the preview of the error message on your canvas so you can design and position it. The error message will only appear to the user in case of error in the user's replies. And again, as we saw in the label text section component, you can design the bounding box of the error text and edit and design the text itself. The drop-down form element is made out of three sections as well a label text section, a drop-down selection, and an error message section. Under the drop-down tab on the right side of our menu, we can set the name of each item that will appear on our drop-down list, delete, or add a new one. To change the order of appearance, choose the cursors on the left of the field and drag it into the right position. Again, you can define the font appearance and the list space, which sets the amount of space between each item in the drop-down list. When using the checkbox element, the checkbox tab opens on the right menu panel. Here you can set the name of each item, delete or add a new item. To change the order of appearance, 
choose the cursors on the left of the item and drag it into the right position. Marking an item as checked in the checkbox tab will set automated checked signs on this label. The user, when filling the form, can easily choose to keep the checked item or uncheck it. You can use the checkbox space feature in order to set the amount of space surrounding the text of an item. You can set the space for all sides together or each one separately. When adding radio buttons element and double clicking the element, a radio tab panel opens on the right. Here again you can set up your element, name items, add or delete items, change the order of appearance, define the font appearance, set the item's surrounding space, define required fields, and preview the error message, as we saw before. In contrast to the multiple choice of the checkbox element, the radio buttons allow only one choice. As before, the site user could easily change the radio button you have chosen as default. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, we're always here to help.